What is going on everybody? East Tactics here. And in this video, I'm actually gonna be going through a complete install on the RC6 GS version three from Radiolink. Now this transmitter is the latest version in a long lineup that has been killing it over the years. You can jump on YouTube right now and find a whole plethora of videos and 99% of every one of them are just blown away by the features that this thing has and the budget price that this thing comes in at, which is exactly why I was so interested in Radio Link. I reached out to them. I got them involved in some jump competitions that I host and they're sending out a transmitter to the number one jump of the month in August, 2022. Hopefully we see these guys involved in 2023 when I host another slew of competitions starting in April. But I'm gonna go over some of those details at the end of this video for now. Ultimately what I wanna let you guys know is that in this installation video, I'm gonna be showing you guys some of the key things that you may be curious about when it comes to the installation and also features that this controller has. This thing actually has two antennas. Another thing that I can show you is their transmitters come with this cool little accessory that allows you to get telemetry from the battery in your vehicle. Now, what's interesting is most of our high-end vehicles already have a low voltage cutoff built into the ESC. So what's the real value of this then if we've already got a low voltage cutoff? You still might want to install this thing because it's pretty cool to basically have a heads up display right there on the controller that basically shows you exactly how many volts are in your rig at any given moment instead of sort of waiting for that low voltage to come and then it, your vehicle just shutting off and then you're like oh okay i gotta take it in you know you might actually purposely shut down your rig when you see that your vehicle is reaching that state where your batteries are already in storage mode it saves you some time for when you get back home and you don't really have to worry about putting them on the charger it is a nice little perk it's something to keep in mind and i'm going to show you exactly how to install this in your rig so that you can take advantage of it another thing is if you want to actually bypass this thing giving you the readout telemetry for your main battery because you, like I said, you've already got the low voltage cutoff. You could actually use this to tell you the low voltage on let's say a 3S battery that you have sitting in here running your high power fans. And I'll show you exactly how you can hook that up instead and you'll get alerted by a little alert on the controller. Instead of using this cord right here, you don't even really need it. All you do is just jump to a little one of these, which is the same end as you see right here, and then just run this straight into here. So I plug my batteries in right here with this. So this is how I power my batteries. I have a switch right here where I use two metal zip ties, black metal zip ties to hold the switch in. And then I power both these fans from this 3S battery connecting into the balance terminal, which leaves this one open for me to run a simple, you know, line straight into to the receiver right here where they recommend you plug this in. And now I get the readout that will alert me whenever the 3S battery gets low, which actually is huge for me because I always end up um, going too low on the voltage on these because I have no way of knowing when it's too low. So that's just like one in literally a million facets of this thing. So I'm gonna to try to go into details about what the features are of this as soon as we finish the install. The install is super simple, but I know there are certain questions. So let's get right into it. I'll just install this thing really quickly and then we'll do a once over on the amazing features. All right, let's take a look at the install. On this. All right, so many of you may have already watched the install video where I installed the Firma 160 into a 6S rig. Normally the Firma 160 is designed for your one fifth scale larger 8S rigs. Well, I decided to go above and beyond with my 6S Arma Creighton and put the Firma 160 in there, which is going to be absolutely stellar. I've got the 1730 KV Hobby Star motor in here. I mean, this this thing right here is going to be like, in my opinion, the Rolls Royce setup for a 6S Creighton motor pinion. It's going to have a, it has a 20 tooth pinion in it, 1730 KV, and it has an ESC that's capable of low torque that I can run my big fat tires on it with no problem. If I want to do a standing backflip, man. I can probably just like literally breathe on the controller. It'll do a standing backflip. We'll see. I'm totally excited about getting this thing on the ground because I just barely installed this. But if you want to watch the installation video on how to fit a Firma 160, because the Firma 160 is way bigger than the, than the BLX 185 or the Firma 150. And the products are gonna be in the description. Just look in the description, look on my website, go to the shop tab, and you'll see links to these products, okay? Now, naturally one of the first things that you'll do is you'll go, you'll take the cap off of your receiver box, set it aside. Let me just kind of pull this tight so it stays out of the way. Servo 
and my ESC. The other thing that I'm going to want to run to this thing is this wire, which I told you I'm going to use to, to keep track of the voltage of the 3S battery that I use to power my, my high power fans, and the servo itself. Those are all the wires that are going to be going and being squished down into the little gap that's provided on the side of your receiver box. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five objects going through that, the two antennas. Now, one of the main questions that people often have is which direction does this thing need to be facing in order to properly take advantage of the gyro functionality that's inside of the, these receivers? That's one of the coolest perks of this setup is you have the option to take advantage of what is the equivalent of AVC. The gyro in here does the same thing. It's not quite the same technology as far as how it works. However, it is the same concept. You do want to make sure that the servo goes in flat, but it does not matter actually if it goes in this way, this way, this way. Doesn't really matter what direction it goes in. So don't even stress about it. So one of the things that you'll notice is you can't even fit this thing in here like this anyway because the little stubbies here just make it too fat. It, it, won't, it won't go in. So you can go this direction if you wanted, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to go that direction because your antennas need to come out somewhere, right? So we're just going to make both the antennas come out along the same spot as all the other wires. So when plugging everything in, we're just going to look at the receiver with the words facing, the, with the words facing us, right? Right here, we have our servo. Steering always goes into channel one. And if you look here, you can see channel one, two, three, four, five, all the way through seven. This is a seven channel receiver, which again, I'll go into the perks after the install to tell you all the amazing things that this thing can do. But we're gonna first plug in our servo. And when it comes to the metal little prongs, we want those to be facing 12 o'clock. So you can actually see here, it gives you a little symbol, negative, positive, and white. Well, you know what? <laughs> Those are not going to help us any because they're both black and one's gray. But I will tell you, we'll just look at the, the metal facing and make sure that that's facing 12 o'clock. We'll put that in first. Make sure it goes all the way down. You can kind of see because it's invisible. Just make sure that, that seat's all the way down. Next, we will do the ESC. Same thing, metal facing 12 o'clock right in alongside this one in channel two. The next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead. I don't have the connector right here. Um, I had to order it off of Amazon, but it's basically going to be the male version of this. Uh, it's an XT30. So um, I ordered some XT30s and I'm going to um, solder an XT30 on the end here. And then I'll end up using this for the telemetry where my battery's sitting here. So, and it's long enough that it'll run just like this. Anywho, so I'll go ahead and plug this in now as well, just because we've got to run it. Matching that symbol. All right. So now we've got all this excess wire that we've got to figure out how to deal with. And then we've also got the two antennas. Really, any cheaper stuff will work too. This is like your Gorilla double-sided tape. This is more of your 3M. It's a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna end up using a piece of this. So we're gonna stick this on the bottom. So one of the buttons on here, which is important to get access to, is right here in between the two antennas. So I'm gonna push it this way so that I have the ability to get in there with a small tool and still hit that button if I need to. Not going anywhere. And then the other thing that I'm gonna be putting in here when I'm done is um, a squishy piece of foam that I will set up on top just to provide cushioning in here for the wires and stuff like that bumping and bobbling around. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is simply get all of these wires ran through and I want as much of the wiring that is excess just to be inside the box tucked away. So the antennas themselves, all right, so next is the idea of the antennas. So the antennas, it is very important to, if you look at the instructions here, it shows that the antennas actually need to be 90 degrees away from each other. But it can be confusing because it kind of leads you to think that the, nine, the antennas from the moment that they leave the receiver need to sort of be kind of jutting out 90 degrees from each other. When the reality is, if you look really closely, 
you can actually see the little squiggly lines right there and right there, which is an indication that it's talking about just the ends of the antenna need to be 90 degrees from each other. The rest of the way, you know, can really be wherever you can get it to go. So long as the last inch or so of each of these antennas from here to here are facing away from each other. Now you don't want to sit here and twist these things up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run one antenna, facing out like this and the other antenna facing out like this. Now to achieve this, and this is, this is just me, you could do it if you want, um, you can do whatever you want so long as you make these two antennas kind of 90, the, the last inch or so, 90 degrees from each other. But watch this. I've got my, my little Dremel here. The thickness of the second bit is just bare, about slightly fatter than the thickness of the wire. I'm gonna put a hole here and here in this little triangle section. I'll show you. So the first thing I'm pushing down through the little um, grommet here is the antennas. So I did decide to kind of add a second hole and run the wires on the inside. Um, give me your thoughts and opinions um, down below. And you know, for those of you that maybe are already running this, what did you do with the antennas? Where did you place them in the vehicle? I definitely like how both the antennas are coming out at 90 degrees like this. All right, so now let's get this wiring dealt with. Sometimes you have to like go back and forth like a little saw. There we go. There we go. All right, so now we have it installed. Everything is plugged into the right place. I still will be able to get in there and hit that little button so I can show you how to activate the gyro functionality. Let's talk a little bit about the actual controller itself and the batteries. One of the coolest things about this, you can actually put a 4S battery inside here instead of using your AA batteries. You know, going through six AA batteries when you need to pop them in is sort of like a nightmare. And a 4S battery in here, you can do anywhere from 2S to 4S in here. Obviously, the larger the size of the battery, the longer it will last. But I'm also going to be testing the difference in power level between using your six AA batteries and the distance you can get with the vehicle and the output from the antenna, um, as and then switching that over to 4S. I'm not going to try 2S or 3S. I figure if you're going to throw a LiPo battery in here, you might as well go with the biggest size so it lasts the longest and also gives this thing as much power as possible. Um, but just so you guys know, it's really simple. All you need to do is pop the cover off. The best way to do it is to take it from the front side here, pop it out, and then take your three fingers, squeeze them in there, palm it, and then just wiggle it out like this. It pops out. That's the fastest way to do it. Now, You'll see right here, it's connected in here with a little two-prong terminal. Ideally, you'd want to buy a 4S battery with this already pre-installed. If I can find one, I'll put it in the description and you can just have quick access to it, the same one I buy. Whichever one I buy, no matter what, I'll put a link in the description. I'm gonna find one that fits in here, um, a 4S battery that fits in here the best. All right. We're gonna get this thing bound and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the uh, receiver itself and the binding process and what different modes are accessible for you as an RC enthusiast. So the fact that there are five additional channels on this receiver. In fact, when I originally got my RC and I had a different controller, I was actually using this right here, which is just a two channel receiver. So basically, there's really no functionality. You, you can use one channel for your steering, one channel for your throttle, and you're done. So. 
being able to elevate your game to something like this, which is the receiver that's currently set up with the radio link. This bad boy literally has seven channels. I mean, look at all those inputs. And then on the side here, you see one through five, and then you also see channel six and seven could be dedicated to PPM, which is basically pulse position modulation or S bus. So let me give you a quick overview of the differences between PPM, what we would call PWM and S bus. So PWM is basically pulse width modulation. This is your standard ground vehicle. It's gonna take advantage of all seven channels are gonna be dedicated to whatever you wanna dedicate that channel to. We have all these different buttons and, and stuff that are available. Even a dial, we've got a, but we've got a dial here, we've got a button here that has three positions, a button here that has three positions, and then we have a button here that has two positions and a button here that has two positions. So all those different buttons can be programmed to whatever you want. Like I literally could take my fans have them directly go into the into the receiver box, plug into this, you know, in channel, let's say, um, well, let's see what number this is right here, one, two. So I even, I even drew a little diagram here to help me assist. So these two little toggles, that's B and C, or you can see channel five and channel six. So basically channel five and channel six, I can make this button literally just like, like this, and it will turn on this fan. And then I can hit this one and it'll turn on this fan if I want it. Um, I currently don't do that because I like to plug my fans instead of plugging them into the receiver, which would output 8.4 volts to these. I would much rather um, hook my fans up to a 3S battery, which we've talked about. So that's just that though. If I end up wanting to put like right here, I have a little kit for little LED lights that one of these days I just plan on throwing into my vehicle and I'm going to be able to hook those up to like a switch. And what's even cooler is not only does Radio Link have switches and buttons and stuff available to dedicate to these channels, but they've also made these switches and buttons more than just your typical on and off. You can actually set this one to have three positions, like low, medium, high, or you can have like off, neutral, on, whatever do some unique stuff. Like if you might have three different settings with your LED lights for brightness or something like that, um, you can mess with it. That's the thing. You can do so many things with the different switches. Now, in addition to that though, they've also got a switch here, which has a functionality that you can adjust between um, different modes. So right now, if you press the button and hold it, it'll it's considered to be in the on position. But as soon as you let it go, it's considered to be in the off position. So depending on if it's being held in will determine whether it's on or off. So there's some functionality variance there. Whereas this one, when you press the button, a little light turns on, you press the button once and the light goes off. So basically pressing it turns it to an on phase, pressing it again turns it to the off phase. So a different variation. Now, you can actually adjust this to be the similar setup as this button to where it's if you hold the button in, it'll be on and if you let go, it'll be off. Similar with this one, you can adjust the phase there. So the programming functions are all gonna be available in the setup here when you, you know, and I'll go over the setup stuff here in a minute, kind of show you some of these things. Long story short, guys, is when you don't realize that you can spend 70 or $80 and, you know, with a discount code, with a discount code that I'm gonna be giving you guys today, you can save another 10% and get this thing for, quite frankly, the price you probably would buy this for if you were to search this up on Amazon and buy this setup right here, bam, bam. It's probably gonna be, maybe 10 or $15 cheaper. Why not spend another $20 and literally get your mind blown by the features that are available with this controller? And that's not even to say that this thing right here has a range or a connection quality. This one will go about 130 meters before you lose connection. This will go up to 600 meters before it loses connection. And I'm gonna be showing a video that literally tests this here really shortly. But first, complete the installation process on this and get it bound so I can show you how to set the, the bind. And also, you know, if you want the gyro to be on, if the, if the phase of the gyro is reversed for you, how to switch it and things like that so that you've got it set up 
the way you like it. So um, let's do that. There are four separate modes on this transmitter. For a basher like myself, you're gonna either use mode one or three, which is basically the PWM, which I told you is pulse width modulation. Now, these two here, mode two and four, they still will do the PWM for the first five channels, but what it does is it ends up uniquely changing the last two channels over to PPM and S bus. So PPM is pulse position modulation. You would use this if you were controlling, say, a robot or something like um, that has those like side strafing wheels on it, the, you know, weird things like that. S bus, uh, just in a nutshell, is basically PPM, but it's just a little bit more, from what I understand, it's a little bit more finicky. That's all I really know about it, but we don't even really need to worry because we're gonna jump straight from phase one to phase three. So when you turn the controller on and go to bind it, once it's bound, it'll automatically be set with a green light. You'll be set in PWM mode, which does not use the gyro, and all seven of these channels will be at your disposal. Of course, two of them are gonna be used up for steering and throttle, and then you'll have five channels, and the PPM S bus on six and seven won't be activated, okay? Now, if you wanna transition over to mode three, which is the other PWM mode, it, the only difference is it's now using the gyro. So all you need to do is hit this little button right here three times in quick succession, and we'll do that here in a second. It'll automatically transition from one to three, and it'll basically PWM output with gyro and you'll be good to go, okay? It's gonna come in mode one, we're gonna switch it to mode three. I actually do want to activate the gyro in this, in this setup because the gyro is a feature that you can completely turn on or off depending on your choice, even if you have it activated. Simple as taking this dial and turning it all the way like this, bam. The, the gyro is now 100% off. And this is another thing too that I wanna to point out in the spectrum arena, because if you're rocking the stock controller um, and you decide to activate your AVC and you don't have something like this right here, which is the Spectrum DX5, which has the ability to go in and deactivate like the AVC on the throttle, then you're basically stuck using AVC or this sort of brain technology, not only impacting your steering, but also impacting your throttle. And it, it completely just gives you a bad taste in your mouth when it comes to what AVC is. You're automatically going to have no options to go in and get rid of the, the control that it has over the throttle. What's nice about this setup right here is it just it just has to do with your steering. There's no control. There's no control here of your throttle. You can go into the settings and do things with your throttle that you know are up to you if you want to do some unique things with the throttle with this Radio Link controller. So just kind of know that. I'm not sure if you were aware. In this Radio Link setup, the gyro only has to do with your steering. It's just going to help you out with those rocky and bumpy, um, sandy, you know, hole ridden terrain areas where you're finding that the steering assist is actually pretty nice. And again, why not set it to mode three and you know just turn this thing all the way down if you don't want the gyro to be on? Now, one of the reasons people have a small problem with gyros in general when it comes to bashers is because, you know, as a basher, we ourselves find our rigs to be in the air like for a lot of the time. You know, when we hit a jump, especially a big jump, if your gyro is on while you're in the air, you could imagine that while the vehicle is turning and like twisting in the air, those wheels, if they start twisting and turning on their own by this AI that's built into the receiver, it's gonna throw your vehicle into a spiral. So you really don't want gyro to be active while you're midair. So, you know, a lot of you may not wanna use the gyro while you're doing a lot of jumping, um, now, one thought might be, okay, well, what if it would be possible for me to hit a jump, but then quickly turn this gyro off in that in a split second so that while I'm airborne, the gyro is deactivated? Well, guys, there's not a way at the moment to actually turn one of these buttons into an on-off switch for the gyro that instantaneously turns the gyro off, keeping the functionality of this dial. Believe it or not, guys, I because I am in communication with Radiolink, have written a detailed email describing this functionality. If they could incorporate it in their next firmware update or their next build, let's say the RC6GS version four, and they make it to where, let's say this button right here, you could program it to where when you press the button, it'll turn the gyro off. But when you press the button again, it turns the gyro on.
And if you wanted to, while in midair, see, like while you're holding the controller, you've got your finger here and your middle finger right here. Hit this and turn the gyro off. And then as soon as you hit the ground, hit it again, turn the gyro back on. Or you can press and hold it and that hold means the gyro's on. And then when you let go, the gyro's off. Basically, a, a less than a millisecond reaction time for you to turn off and on that gyro and still keep the functionality of this thing being in the 0% all the way up to 100%, whatever you have it set at, whatever your preference is. Unfortunately, right now that feature is not available and I cannot guarantee that that feature will be available anytime soon. But what I can tell you is that I have emailed Radio Link and this suggestion is going to make its way up to the top levels and their research and development. So cross your fingers, guys. But for now, I'd still get your hands on this thing because just having this option right here to dial the gyro on and off is absolutely amazing and you're gonna love it for your on the ground ripping around through rocky and bumpy terrain so anyway that's enough on that tangent let me go ahead and set my camera up and let's get the bind uh, going right now first thing you do is just turn the controller on right here there we go Controller is on. You can see it's got 15.4 volts in there, which is a 4S battery currently sitting inside here. And now I'm going to turn the rig on. So from the looks of it, I'm actually already bound, which is, I guess I won't be able to actually show you guys how insanely easy it is to bind it because it's already showing up right here as a red light, which is the color for mode three, which again is that setting for having the gyro on and there's classic PWM mode. Um, but let me just tell you this, you know, if, if this wasn't bound yet, you would basically have just turned the controller on and then all you need to do is move the controller about this far away. That's it. You don't have to do a bind plug. You don't have to do anything wonky and you'll see it start flashing green and then it'll like turn solid green. And that's when you know it's bound. Simple as that. And, and just to answer an age old question when it comes to receivers and controllers or transmitters when it comes to the industry, 99% of the time you do have to have the, the receiver that belongs to the brand. Meaning, you know, Radio Link is gonna provide or create a receiver for their transmitters. Same with Traxxas, same with Spectrum. You know, people that have this idea of, uh, is it possible for me to take, you know, this thing and, and program it to my other RC cars that are in my fleet and just make that receiver match up to this one? And the answer to that question is no. If you want to use this transmitter to control a multitude of vehicles, then you're going to have to pick up uh, the receiver that belongs to this transmitter for each vehicle. Now here's the beauty. These transmitters do not even make up the majority of the cost when you buy this combo. The transmitters are the receivers are only like $20. They're literally that cheap. So you can you can rest assured that if you want to outfit all your rigs with that receiver, you can do so without killing your budget. So just keep that in mind. So anyway, right now, guys, you'll notice that the vehicle is set up. Um, and let me move this box right here out of the way so we can kind of show you some things that you may run into. Okay, so as, as we discussed, um, right now it's bound and it's set in mode three, which is a red indicator. Now, if we were just, if we didn't want the gyro, or we didn't want this knob here to control the gyro, just let's say it was, it's just not even a part of your desire to have the ability to turn it off here or use it, then you would want this to be set in mode one. So let's go ahead and transition this back to mode one and I'll show you how simple it is to do that. Basically, it's a press of this button down here three times. So right now, it's showing red. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna hit this button three times. Found this little tool that I use for my AR-15 um, that's got a little bend to it. So, okay, let's get in there and press this three times in quick succession and it'll see it go back to mode one. Okay, three times, now it's green. Hopefully you can see that. If I turn this light off, you might be able to see the green light a little bit better. Um, and this one. All right, so the green light, this means that ABC is act is off, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to mode three by pressing the button three times in quick succession. One, two, three. Now it's red and watch. Now, it is possible for the phase of the, um, 
gyro to be in reverse or not right for your vehicle. So the best way to see that is when you go left, the vehicle is also turning left, assisting. So right now the phase is actually off because the, the, the currently if my vehicle were turning this direction, my I can tell that by this moving downward, right there, downward, that that's wrong. What you do to reverse it is basically hit the button twice quickly. Ready? And that will just switch the phase. Okay, I just hit it twice. I just tapped it twice. Now watch. Now the phase is correct. And again, I can adjust this phase all the way down to, let's say like just 10%. Now let's go all the way back up to 100%. So you're gonna be able to, on the fly, adjust how much you want this, this gyro to impact you. All right, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and just shut my vehicle off, um, which is gonna bring up another point that I wanted to talk about as far as a perk of this, uh, of this radio and this setup. Um, it has fail safes. Have you ever gone to turn off your controller and your vehicle took off on you? Because you have to be super careful if you turn the brains off before you turn the car off and vice versa. Well, one of the most beautiful things about Radio Link and their transmitters is they've got a built-in fail-safe system that is not only set by default to prevent that from happening, but it's also completely customizable to where you can actually go in and do some pretty unique things with fail-safes on the different channels. So, but right now, watch. I'll go ahead and turn the vehicle off. And the vehicle didn't go haywire. That right there is worth its money. Just that one feature is enough to say, go out and buy this receiver. The fail safe, that fail safe thing is just, to me, it's, it's clutch. And I don't know why it doesn't exist in your stock stuff. So, well guys, that pretty much buttons up everything that I needed to say on this video. I know it was really long, but I went through this thing multiple times thinking of ways to shorten it up, but all the things that I had to say were really important. So that's why I put bookmarks in for you to basically jump around if you want to. And there's still the video that I'm going to be dropping showing you in depth details on each one of the programming features. Stay tuned for that because guys, it's going to give you a lot more of a better understanding so that when you pick up this thing, you'll know exactly what, what it can and is capable of doing. So. I know I mentioned in the very beginning of this video that I would also reiterate that come April next year, we will be doing another group of jump competitions. And Radio Link is poised to be part of the sponsorships. Support the East Tactics channel and the jump competitions by buying one of these because that's going to go a long way to secure them for next year. 10% off. Take advantage of it right now. Look in the description. Pick it up. Keep your eyes peeled for that next video that's going to show a couple of new caveats about this controller because there still is more to say. Can you believe that? Anyway guys, keep it real, East Tactics, out.